There is no one to deride me But you got to have friends The feelings are so strong You got to have Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. I'm honored to have my friend and neighbor, Chris Sutton, on the show today. Thank you. I, um... I first knocked on her door for something, and when I walked in, <laughs> her house is beautiful and decorated with these quilts that she has made, she and her mother. Yes. They are quite a dynamic duo. How mm -hmm. long have you been quilting, Chris? I have been doing it about seven years. That's right. And yes. what did you do previous that was crafty? Because you're crafty, I think, oh, to the core. I've done everything. <laughs> Candles, <laughs> baskets, stained glass. Really? Yes. And uh, back and in the day, macrame. Okay, so you kind of do and you get everything that you can out of it and then you move on. To then the I move on. When I'm done doing craft, I'm done. So then. this is seven years you've been doing this. Mm -hmm. How did you get started? Was it your mom? Or? Through my mother, yes. She started and thought that I needed to do it. So I did make a top, a quilt top, pieced it, and then sent it to a lady to be quilted. And then I thought, I want to do it all the way, everything. How did you know you were going to like it that, that much? Well, I, I enjoyed the piecing and the making the quilts. Uh -huh. And my mother had bought a quilting frame and then a, nine, okay. uh, a bigger sewing machine to do quilting. And so then this she... Is, this must be where you get it from. It is. My mother, <laughs> yes. I give her all the credit. Uh, she then did not like that frame and the machine. So I said, well, let me try it. Uh -huh. So I did and liked it. And then I moved up from there to a uh, quilting machine and then up to a bigger one okay. where I'm at now. Yeah, and you certainly make use of it. I do. I, mean, I do use them. If you have it and it sits in a room and nothing happens with it, it's there is someone out there who will enjoy it. Yes, pass and it on. I do love the quilting part of it, the long arm part of it, too. What yeah. was your first quilt? Do you remember? I, it was probably a nine patch, a real simple. Okay. And then I do remember she made me do a card trick quilt block, is what it's called. Oh, one of your first ones? One of the first ones, yes. Interesting. I yeah. think of that as being a mm -hmm. little complex. It was a little more well, than with, a with nine patch. With colors and yeah. with the pieces. Yes. And she spent a lot of time at my house helping me cut, reading the ruler, and, you know, piecing and doing it. Yeah, so she played a big part in this. Interesting. And it's out of control now. For both of you? For both of us. Okay. And we do a lot of the same quilts. And she's notorious for buying a pattern uh -huh. and then thinking it's too complicated. Uh -huh. So then I get to do it first, and this, then she will do it. This is why it is fun to it have is. a comrade in arms. Because yes. One of you will, you know, take a step ahead, mm -hmm. and then the other one says, oh, it's going to be okay, and then mm -hmm. they take the step ahead, Yes. and you can play off each other's colors. I've seen some of um, both Chris and Carolyn's, your yes, Carolyn. Carolyn mm -hmm. um, their quilts, and you see a different personality in each one of them. Yes. It's so much fun. This, there, she bought that pattern, this okay. quilt, this hexy garden, and then did not do it. So as soon as I started it, okay. she started one. Let's take a top look here. And when I see this, the mm -hmm. thing that I think of is it's, it's like a play on Grandma's flower garden, yep. yes. which has to be hand done, correct? But yes, I think so, so I believe. I'm this is somebody else's take in order to make it, because this is not a hand done thing. No. When I was at Chris's house, I saw this and I asked her, did you have to piece it. I mean, you can, um, yeah, you have to piece it. So let's get to the core of this. Here it is. It's, it's not quite a block. So how big, how big is this? Is what? This is a block right here, Laura. Okay. So this is what she showed me. This is the pieces that, that I'm making. I, they start from this pile. So you start by making a center mm -hmm. and doing tips. They're doing, yeah, all your little pieces. And, and you have some like this. And, and then, then this you do is use the block. a sewing machine for yes. the entire thing. Yes. And so there's lots of points in this. There is. Stinker. Mm -hmm. And they set, and this is kind of a diamond shape mm -hmm. when it's held out. But that's where, and then this, of course, goes into row after row. Okay, that's kind of good. 
front view for these then because this this is what she has pieced together as a diamond and then it's going to lay in here in the row yeah similar something like that because mm -hmm. it's going to make the star point right here see when it's sewn together uh -huh. with that one yeah so even though these are the background color you still yes. need to be careful with it because it forms the center white star. yes and so you do block after block of these. Mm, and this looks like a beautiful scrap. This is all scrap, of course, except for the background is you have to have that. But mm -hmm. and I like she's got a star the stars, white yeah, white on white, which goes really well with the hexes and the center stars. But back to the beginning, my mother bought that, and it set in her sewing room. I said, "Well, let me try it." She has. I have hers at home waiting to be quilted. Hers is done she's now. Done. Yes. Does she do one project at a time and you have more going on, or? Well, I just kind of, I haven't lost interest, but I'm not in a big rush. Uh -huh. I, on, I've done so many now, I can take my time. But she just has more time, <laughs> and she did get it done. And I think she wanted to say, ha ha. <laughs> I, I beat you, because she had no idea. She just couldn't right. fathom doing it. and. Uh, it was real. It's a, an easy quilt to do. So it's fun to have a challenge like that. Yeah. You're not afraid of your sewing machine and fabric, but then right. it's got a different construction. Or yes. It's got something unusual. And I want to point out um, a type of quilt that Chris is so good at is called. How do you say it again? Bargello. The Bargello quilt. And if we can do a top-down picture, we it's have the Bargello. Pattern. I love those. This is. You look at it and it fades together to be a picture mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. But the construction, again, is unusual. And how can you describe to us? And it's okay, there are Bargello quilt books at the library. Yes. You can check out this. It's a larger picture. Right. And this, were I to sit down and see that this is how I make the fabric, each of these squares has a number with which fabric it is. Right. So you own 16 different fabrics. Mm -hmm. And if I were to see this and think I have to cut out all of these different shaped fabrics and sew the little teeny squares together, I would wad it up and I would throw it in the trash mm -hmm. can. But that is not the way you put it together. Not the way at all, no. You do it in strips. And usually they, they will tell you in your directions At the very how top. wide to cut row one. They're one inch strips. Um, down to one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters to two inches. So you sew your strips together, and I think you sew them at two and a half actually. Then you cut them at different widths. At different widths, and s then they're already sewn together. And so you add each strip. You you sew together, and then you cut it, and you turn it sideways, and put it together again. And it's the and magic of somebody yes. else figuring out where all the colors go. Right. That when you're done, you have this fantastic yes. image. Yes. They're not all hearts. You've done a lot of oh, hearts. Oh, I've done a couple hearts, yes. And I've done one, uh, it's called uh, like a trip around the world type. Mm -hmm. And uh, There's some that are just um, like fading. Like waves and fade in and out. and. And the interest, what makes most of this happen is you get really small widths of fabric in the center, like an inch. And the wider and the narrower your strips are is what does all of this. The, those are wider strips. So, Interesting. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of geometric. I, I know, please listen to your math teachers yes. if you're in school because... Yeah. I know when you're in math, you think, how will it ever be useful? Mm -hmm. You don't know the ways it will be useful. Of course, yeah. figuring out tax when you're trying to mm -hmm. buy things. and But even for my crafting with um, knitting, mm -hmm. I always have to figure out increases and decreases. I'm writing patterns. I have to figure out how many stitches to put places. Right. Quilting, you use it all the time. You do use it all the time, yes. Especially if you want to design. Yes, or you want to change a pattern to your size. Which... <laughs> I'm sure we have all done. Yes, by um, accident or because you <laughs> just could, was smart enough to do it. Happened. Yeah. A different bed or yes. a particular wall. Right. Mm -hmm. that, it's fun. I, I do like the Bargello, and I am going to do another one so, soon, but I've got to finish a couple. 
a couple things. Yep, mm -hmm. you got to show mom. That yes, I. Here. Yes, I got to get this one finished. Garden. Yeah. That's, which one was free motion? This is free motion. Okay, let's look at this one first. Okay. So what we're talking about is that a quilt is made by piecing a top, and oftentimes that's what a lot of people like to do because you get to choose the colors, you get to choose the pattern, you get to put it together. And then at that point, you're not done. You have to have a piece of something fluffy in between mm -hmm. and a piece of background, mm -hmm. and then the actual quilting is putting those three together, and that's what Chris is especially good at with her machine. So let's take, um, well, if you look at it from this angle, you can see a beautiful pattern, a beautiful quilt. I assume you made this yourself. Yes, I did. Okay. And now if we take a, a look at it closer, you can hopefully see some of the quilting. So the quilting itself is this machine stitching that is putting all three of those levels, the top, the bottom, and the batting, together. It holds it together. You want to make sure it's done at what how far apart does it need to be quilted? It usually um, two or three inches, and okay. some of it can be further apart, like six inches. I mean, depends on the batting, but I kind of like to get it pretty close. The real beauty. They don't have to touch, but. Right. The real beauty is just in seeing. That it's the texture, a lot of it is the texture mm -hmm. it gives the quilt. Um, in different lighting, uh, yeah. it stands out. Mm -hmm. But this is really pretty. You've picked a white thread, and what you said is you said this was freehand? Freehand. I do this okay. just yeah, on the front of my machine. What does that mean? It means that I'm just doing this pattern on my own with no pattern. Isn't I mean, that amazing? There is pantographs that you can use. Okay. And you go on the back of your machine. Okay. And you will have a laser light. You follow that pattern row after row. Okay. So it's called edge to edge or a pantograph quilt. And so that is a particular, it's almost like a quilting template that yes. other people might place on top and trace through and quilt. But you have it on the side of your particular machine and you follow it by moving the machine, the, the machine itself. The laser light the laser will follow light that this. pattern, yes. But this is just amazing that that's freehand. That is all freehand. I just do it and she just goes by okay. no means a professional, but I can do... <laughs> I could, and the back, sometimes the back shows you more of that. Oh, yeah. We got some the texture, I guess, and you can see. And this is really kind of like a feather, but it's kind of like a cat's claw. It's got that point where I come around, uh -huh. do a point, Touch and then back. Almost. And around, and it just <clears throat> it makes your feathers. It's easier to do it that way. It's, That's beautiful. Yeah. You can just kind of zip along, do whatever you want on a... Now I'm going to pull up the other quilt that you have that is also freehand. Okay, that's free motion. Free motion, excuse me. Yeah. And um, this is, I think, amazing. First of all, we've got <coughs> free motion done. You can see easier mm -hmm. on the colored part. Oh, uh, you can see it here. You on, can see, yeah, on you beige. Can, yeah. And then tell me what this is. This is, was a triangle, it's part of the quilt block, but I used my uh, embroidery machine that my mother, again, thought I needed, because she has one, and talked me into kind of getting one, and I do enjoy it. And you just, of course, it's all computerized, and you put your hoop in, and... This is prior to any quilting, this is yes. with the piecing. Mm -hmm. You take a hoop, mm -hmm. you make sure the fabric's taut. Right. And then what do you do? Well, you, uh, of course, put it in your machine, pick your pattern, and hit start. Of course, you add, and it will do all of the pink. Mm -hmm. Then you change thread. Okay. And then to the yellow, the green, and the purple. It does all of those colors. Well, it's really interesting. I mean, it is embroidery, but it's, uh -huh. it's different stitches of yes. embroidery. Yes, These um, stamen actually stand out a wee bit. Mm -hmm. And then you have a, a running stitch, and you yes. have... Oh, is, is that a, like a, little a metal? Almost that the dark yellow. It seems like it's a different thread. Or it must it, no, it's the stitch. same thread, but okay. it kind of replicates that. Uh, Bullion stitch or something? Candle wicking, where you mm. kind of do the knot or something, kind of, just to make this, the stamen there in it. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And then you included that as and one of your. In the top, yes. And then you did all the. Yeah. And just uh, and then free the, motion quilting. And the free motion quilting on the back is all, yeah. And you can't see it too much there because, no, because of, the, of the pattern. Yeah. 
But yeah, and it's just it's um, something fun to do. And Besides a sort of floral, oh, this is more of a feather because it's rounded. R yes. Um, and the cat's claw, what are some other things that you regularly do? Oh, you can do leaves and stars and um, just like a puzzly piece, real simple. Mm -hmm. Do loops um, and anything your little heart desires. Yeah, whatever you yeah, whatever you want. And then when you talk about the the panograph, 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 yes. So this is an example of a quilting that you did. Mm -hmm. with the panograph. It's nice you've got a variegated thread. Mm -hmm. That's why it changes color. It's one thread, but it changes color. Right. Yes. And what are some of those? So you get your quilt all stretched out and rolled up. Mm -hmm. You get your machine set. You put your little picture down, and then what What do you do again? You just go uh, from the right side of the quilt to the left, back and forth, row after row. Following. And following the this pattern of this leaf and loops around in a row. And when you're done, you roll your quilt to your next spot and go again. And the pantographs, you can have, there's hundreds and mm -hmm. hundreds of mm -hmm. designs. More com Some that are a lot more complex than others, but this is a real simple one. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, it's nice because it's, it's continuous, but it's, it's, conti it's, yeah. it's a leaf. Mm -hmm. Just and a there's simple, another little leaf point yeah. here, let's see. And you try so to... Give it to a place where you can see. Yeah. So, yeah. You just and that's kinda... in purple. Here's one coming down. It's like a little heart-shaped leaf. Mm -hmm. And coming along to another leaf. Yep. Yeah. And it comes down and around. And from right here is a row. Mm -hmm. About right in there. Or the same as here. That's a row. Somewhere in here, yeah. And you just do that row after row when you're quilting. Follow the pattern, which is very simple. What are some of those that you have done with your machine? Oh, leaves. I've done the the leaves. Um, they have one called Splash, which is like a, a splash. splash. Mm -hmm. um, I have a paisley type one, and I can't remember. I have quite a few. I can't remember all their names. I don't use them that often. I really like to do the free motion. You know, your free motion is a lot more uh, dense and a lot more. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and I, I kind of I am fast at quilting. I don't want to take my time. I want to get to on go there and back go. And forth, back yeah. <laughs> and follow this pattern. By the time I'm at the end of the quilt, I'm thinking, oh, okay, I need a break. Uh -huh. When I stand in the front, I can just go at it and it goes quicker for me. Well, that's interesting. Yes. So. Well, you have definitely found a craft that you excel at. Well, I'm And that trying. you have fun at. <laughs> I do enjoy it. And yes. And that you have a comrade in arms with. I yes, I do. Several. Well, I'm very thankful that you live across from me. Well, and I'm glad that you came on the show and were able to tell people a little bit about machine quilting. And um, I know we've all learned something, but perhaps if you're interested, if you have a piece top at home, I know I have had friends who have inherited piece tops mm -hmm. and they would like to remember the person they inherited it from. They don't know what to do with it. Why yes. not finish it off? Yes, and I have two that I have to call my customer for. She um, one of them quilted. Her great aunt made them. Oh. They're very old. And I've quilted both of them for her. And I need to call her because she, so she can come and get them. That's wonderful. It gives yeah. a whole new life. Oh, yes. And passes on something to a new generation. Yes, she's so. given them to her grandchildren. And the quilting on them is amazing. So she's giving them to her grandchildren and they were her great aunts? Yes. So they're their great, 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 great aunts. Aunt, yes. That's incredible. It is. Yes, so, so there's beautiful. a whole wealth in history that can be in textiles. And um, yes. I'd encourage you to give... Chris a call and see if she can perhaps finish off a quilt that you've got sitting in a in a closet somewhere. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It's fun. Welcome to the book corner. Today I want to point out a book that the Fulton County Public Library has in stock. It is called Hook, Loop, and Lock. Create fun and easy locker hooked projects. I wanted to point this out because if you're interested in doing locker rug hooking, it might be just enough com complex, have enough complexity in it that you don't feel you can sit down by yourself and figure it out. This book by Teresa Polito is wonderful. I'm going to show you a few things so that you too can produce. Look, my first locker rug hook project that I've given to my mother-in-law. Thank you for loaning it back to me for this. 
and it looks a little bit similar. If you look at the front cover, mine looks a little bit similar to what she has here. This woman, Teresa, is um, very creative in that it's not just rugs that she has made, but she has made coasters. She's made a book cover and um, lots of different projects. A bag, which I think might be quite heavy. Once you've done locker rug hooking, you know how dense it is. She has locker rug hooked on burlap, just little bits of it. And again, that um, anchor or yarn in it will keep that from pulling out. But enough to give a little bit of a decoration to a sachet, to a bag. Here she's made a clutch. I think that's pretty bold. She's got a, a basket, which I think is a great idea. I'm sure she takes you through how to make the corners. We've got a pillow cover, some trivets. This I thought was quite interesting. She has a welcome mat and she has used a variety of different materials through the book. This one is entirely plastic bags. She talks about how to shred them and then she uses different colored plastic bags to make a welcome mat that later on if it gets dirty you can just hose off. I'm going to see she has one other that's very unique which is there you go. This is a, um, she's got a light inside. A large lamp and a bottom lamp and she has put different bangles and beads on the bottom. I mean it's quite creative. When you go to the beginning, which will be of interest to those of you who want to start, she has a whole list of the different materials, how you pre-cut, embellishments, different specialty materials you can use. Other tools, you could use a rotary cutter for cutting your own fabric. And then she has the second whole entire section is techniques. How you prepare it, how you do the edging, how you do different methods of stitching the edging, and then of course how you lock a rug hook in the beginning. But that is only a few pages for that. It really is a very easy um, easy thing to practice. It's fun and it only takes a little practice to get the steps right. So if you were interested in figuring out how to lock a rug hook, order a hook or go to Joann's in Plymouth and get one. Use your own scraps of fabric or embellishments. Get the book out and maybe you too can have your own trivet at Christmas or at some point in the winter and it's a lovely way to use up those scraps. Thanks for being with me on The Book Corner. See you again next time.